question is that the motion be agreed to. I call Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, that speech from uh, the Leader of the House pretty much sums up the National Government's approach to a very serious issue for the country, and that is consideration of whether or not we change our flag. And for that member, as it is for the Prime Minister, it is just a game. Right. It is who right. has got what, and it is just about manipulating and pussyfooting and carrying on as if it's all just a big game. You see, the National Government could have done this weeks ago. Yes. The National Government could have done this weeks ago. They could have done it last week when we put up, we sought the leave of the House to introduce legislation to add another option and to give New Zealanders a choice. Now, Mr Speaker, we will support this bill because we support giving New Zealanders a choice, a real choice. Because the reality about the referendum, uh, a flag referendum process so far, and the whole flag change process, is that it has just, under John Key, become an absolute and utter shambles. Yes. He could not manage a flag referendum process to save himself, which now it turns out is what he's going to have to do. Because New Zealanders are disillusioned, they are beyond disappointed, they are disillusioned and frustrated and disappointed that they will not be listened to by the most senior elected politician in the country. Um, uh, the Prime Minister who goes around, every meeting he can, anywhere between two people and 200 people, and insists that they hear his case for change, demand that they raise their hands in answer to his question, and when they don't give him an answer he likes, he berates them. And that, that is where this has now come to. Let's go back to the start of this process. This has always been John Key's pet project. He said to the people of New Zealand, oh, we must change the flag. We must have a flag change. And then he said it must be black. And he said it must have a silver fern on it. And when nobody liked the idea of it being black, he said, oh, as long as it's got a silver fern on it. And he pumped that up and he talked it up. And he selected a flag consideration panel of his own. And this was a consideration panel that was tasked with coming up with a new design for a new flag. And do you think they had a designer on it? No. Do you think that, you know, for the biggest design project for the nation, a design that was meant to reflect the nation, do you think they'd put a professional designer on it? Not a one. Not a one. Which, le which gave the lie to the Prime Minister's claim that this was about us forging a new identity. It was about his project and has appalling taste and aesthetics, for another thing. So we went off with the flag consideration panel that had no design expertise. Then when he was called out on it, after they had toured the country, getting an average of 29 people at their meetings, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on that exercise, they then thought, gee, we'd better get a designer to come in and have a look. And they had a designer come and have a look for two hours. And that was it. That was the input. But it was too late by that time because they were, everybody was dancing to the Prime Minister's tune. And then they came up with their recommendations. So a Prime Minister who sets up a personally selected panel, having told the world at large, we must have a flag with a silver fern on it, they were told they've got to come up with four options. What do the three of the four options have on it, mysteriously? A oh, silver fern. How unusual. What a coincidence. Just what the Prime Minister wanted. And one other and I overlooked some obvious, uh, some obvious other contenders. That is how shambolic has been. It doesn't stop there, of course. They had a cross-party group. They had a cross-party group of this House. Only one party wasn't on it, but every other party was on it. Every other party, bar national, said, we ought to ask the question of New Zealanders, because we are not only a democracy, but as politicians we respect the electorate. We better have a question on there that says, do you want to change the flag or not? Objection from one party only, for the party opposite, the government party. And even though the recommendation went up to Cabinet, what did Cabinet do? Just dumped it, pushed it aside, said not relevant. We're not going to give people that choice. Who knows, they might not want to change the flag. Whoa. Well, that's, that's democracy under the National Party in New Zealand today. This has been an utter shambles. And it is, an, it is John Key's utter shambles. And every attempt to try and get some responsiveness some democracy since has fallen on deaf ears. We tried last week. I offered to work with the Prime Minister. So let's at least have a talk about it. No. It's not good. We saw the public reaction. We knew the public. The public is terrified. 
that they're going to get to the end of the second referendum. We've spent $26 million and we'll still have the same flag. We offered to work with the government on it. John Key said, publicly said, yeah, I'll meet with Andrew Little. We'll have a talk about it. I wrote to him and said, here are some issues. Let's have a talk about it. No conditions. Let's have a talk about it. And then he writes back and says, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. He said, he said no, you put conditions on it. We can't meet. So I wrote back to him and I corrected him and I said, no, no, Prime Minister, you seem to have got this wrong. I said, let's meet with no conditions. Let's at least have a talk about this because this is about public confidence in this process. It's not about political games. It's not like Jerry Brownlee's speech, which was about calling out, you know, who's, who's sort of outmaneuvered who and who's got this point up and who scored that particular point. This is far too important. This is far too important. National Party members might think this is all a big game. It's all just about their egos or their Prime Minister's ego. But this is way more important than that. There are New Zealanders who are deeply concerned about this. Those who don't want to change because they consider that the current flag is the flag that they identify with as they've gone into conflicts around the world. They are concerned about it. And they must be entitled to have a voice. And they should not be rubbished or talked down or outmaneuvered as the government and the, uh, uh, might have. Uh, and so, Mr Speaker, we will take this opportunity to ensure that New Zealanders have more choice. But we will also take the opportunity of the passage of this bill to ensure that New Zealanders have real choice. Because we are not going to overlook the thousands and thousands of New Zealanders who are concerned that they are not being afforded the dignity of the very basic question, do you want to change the flag? That is the first question New Zealanders should have been argued. They should have been shown some respect by the government. They should be shown some respect by this parliament. And we will argue for it. And we will put that up as a supplementary order paper during the course of this debate. And then let New Zealanders decide. Let New Zealanders make a real choice and a real decision. This is not about game playing. This is an important exercise that reflects New Zealand, the flavour of New Zealand to the world our sense of identity of ourselves. And it may well be, if the polls are anything to go by, that most New Zealanders are thinking, this is not the time. This is not the time. But if that is the, if that is the sentiment of a large number of New Zealanders, and if we are to go through with a referendum and give people the democratic choice, then they should be given a real choice. They should be allowed to answer that question. Personally, I think it is time we should reconsider our flag. I am prepared to support that change, since now a referendum is inevitable. But let New Zealanders speak. Let them have their choice. This is not the plaything of 121 politicians to score points and, and, and work out who might be smarter than who. That would be an abomination for such an important issue. So, Mr Speaker, as I have said, we will support this bill. We will argue it um, all the way through. We will argue for the right for New Zealanders on such an important issue, and an issue that goes to their sense of identity, our identity, what we show around the world and to ourselves on our occasions of uh, national significance, uh, this is not a matter that should be given anything other than the maximum choice to the voters who decide, who give us the responsibility to do what we do. Absolutely. So we will do that, Mr Speaker, and we will hold our heads up high and proud that we have stuck to our principal position, which is that New Zealanders must be given a choice on this issue and they must be given their voice. And we will argue and take every opportunity to make sure that the ballot papers for this referendum truly reflect that. If we get to the end of the referendum process and there is no change in the flag and this government has seen $26 million spent, that will sit firmly at the feet of the Prime Minister and every single member of the National Party who have led this country on a silly, foolish, folly, merry dance, an absolute and utter shambles, because they cannot sort it out themselves. They are terrified. They are terrified of the electorate of New Zealand. I call